Morning friends, it's Heather at Bush Poppy Farm. Hope you are doing well. Uh, I've been quiet the last couple days because I finally succumbed to the, the cold that Mike got at the wedding. So um, I don't feel that terrible. I really thought it would be a whole lot worse because he's been struggling. But uh, I'm taking advantage of that not feeling so terrible to do a tiny bit of work. I'm not pushing myself <clears throat> because I know how that goes. <laughs> so. We're out here at the farm. I, I've been coming out every morning, even though I've been sick, uh, to make sure that the irrigation's working and it is, and, and the seedlings all look good. They're all still here. <laughs> but I need to direct sow some Bells of Ireland today. Um, I have Buplurum. I was gonna direct sow Buplurum as well, but I ended up buying plugs of that from Farmer Bailey. That will be coming um, in the spring along with Campanula and gosh, I got some other stuff, which I don't remember. Anyway, um, so I have packages of Bells of Ireland seeds that we're going to direct sow this morning. Um, I do see some problems in the irrigation, so just some, some little holes that I need to fix. But otherwise, uh, it's been going really well. The seedlings look settled in. They're all standing up happy, as you can see. Um, they are clearly settled in because they are nice and sprightly and we've been going down into the 40s at night so it was 42 this morning when I got up which was nice and um, that means these guys are getting that cold that they really want so uh, it's still warm in the daytime which is fine um, but they definitely are enjoying the cold night temperatures you can see the straw flower still looking good all of our fever few is looking good in here. I think we've got good saturation on the soil because I can definitely see where the soil has settled and that's that's great. Um, we've got, <clears throat> this is the cyanoglossum. That's all looking good. And like I said, I am seeing no losses right now. So that makes me very happy. So this is the section right here this is all snapdragons over here and then we've got the status over here i'm going to pull the netting back and just do a couple drills with my hoe and we will put these bells of ireland seeds in the ground now the other nice thing about putting them here since this is screened the birds won't be able to eat the seeds and that's a bonus so i have my seed packets here of bells of ireland Got a really big one here from Johnny's. Now these have been in the refrigerator for the last month. Um, these do much better direct sown. They don't really like to be transplanted, although you can transplant them. Uh, but what they really need is a stratification period, which means they need a cold period in order to really start to um, germinate well. And so if I had not put them uh, in the fridge, I could have direct sown them here, but they probably wouldn't germinate for me until spring. So I've kind of tricked them into thinking they've gone through that winter and um, they've been sitting in the cold. And so now they're ready. Uh, really, they said one to two weeks is enough, but I kept them in there for a month just because I was busy doing other things. But this this will be good. So I'm going to use my favorite hoe. This is the Elliott Coleman collinear hoe and I'm just going to use it. I like it because it's a stand-up hoe. You don't, you can do all your work upright so there's not any bending over which is really nice. So I'm going to use it to create a couple drills um, along the drip line, drip tape line, and then we will sprinkle the seeds. These need light to germinate so we can't cover them with soil. I'm just going to use the edge of the flat part of my hoe to kind of pack them in just so that they have good seed to soil contact and then we're just gonna wait and they'll do their thing and like I said because this is covered this bed is covered with netting uh, the birds won't be able to get in and eat the seeds um, so especially because the seeds will be on the surface <laughs> all right let me set you guys up so you can watch what I'm doing okay so I'm gonna hold my hoe at an angle like this and I'm going to just create a drill that just means dig a little hole nice and long here move this hose there we go so it's more in the in line okay so we just create our drill 
and you can do this with your hand. It's just nicer for me to do it with the hoe. And this is in our open space where we can put some bells of Ireland. All right, then I'm just gonna come along. I like to dump all of the seeds into my hand and then just dribble them in. Um, I will be kind of heavy handed with them because uh, in order to get a really good stand, I need to have a lot. I can always come in and thin later. This is something I learned from Lisa Mason Ziegler. She suggests heavily sewing. You can always thin later. But if you don't sew heavily enough, then you're not gonna have enough plants. Okay. The seeds for Bells of Ireland are really cool. They're kind of like triangular. <laughs> I think that's awesome. Now I'm just gonna take my hoe and press them in. I'm not covering them with soil. I'm just making sure that they have good contact with the soil. And the soil is damp, so that will be all the water that they need. All right, now I just need to do this other side. Okay, that job's done. That was super easy. I still even have some seeds left. And I think I will combine those with the other seeds that I'm gonna direct sow here in the daffodil bed that we planted the other day. Um, I have a whole bunch of seeds that I'm gonna mix up in a bowl. I've got um, Rudbeckia, Eryngium, we'll put some bells in there, uh, Cosmos, so they're both cold and, and warm season annuals and perennials. I've got some salvia seeds, just a whole bunch of stuff. I'll go over that with you when we get them out here. And I'm going to surface sow everything. I've got poppies and stuff. And so this whole area will get sown, but I'm waiting until we get closer to a rain because right now they'll just sit on the surface and they'll bake and that will probably destroy their ability to germinate. So uh, we have no rain in the forecast yet for the next two weeks. Uh, we have not had a rain yet. We're generally we get, well, it used to be we would get our first rain at Halloween. So our kids grew up uh, trick-or-treating in the rain and that was okay. Nobody cared because we were all excited to have rain. <laughs> so um, I don't think that's gonna happen this year. And um, like I said, we're moving into a La Nina cycle, which um, is already making itself known in the Atlantic with all the bad hurricanes. Um, and here it generally means drier than normal conditions, especially for Southern California. So I don't know. Um, the crucial time for us to get water, to get rain is the January through March timeframe. Uh, a couple years ago, we had a ton of rain in October, November, and then nothing for the rest of the season. Like maybe one or two rainstorms, but that was it. And uh, that was while we were still in our major drought. So that was rough. Um, so, you know, if it takes a little while longer, I mean, we are praying for rain. It'd be nice to get it before November, but I don't think that's gonna happen. 
However, as long as we get some, <laughs> that will be wonderful. I didn't have to dip into my uh, IBC tote, so I still have about um, 150 gallons in there of water. Um, so if by some horrible happenstance we don't get much rain this year, I have enough uh, in there and I can always fill it up uh, with a hose from way up at the barn. So, all right, that's gonna be it for me out here. Now, today at home, first I need to go get some Sudafed, <laughs> uh, but at home, I think we're gonna be clearing out the pepper bed and getting ready to plant garlic. And I'm gonna check on the sweet potatoes. I think I'm still gonna leave them in for another uh, couple of weeks because they only take about seven days to cure. Um, that's so they have enough sugars. They can convert all their starches to sugars and they're super sweet. I wanna have them for Thanksgiving, uh, but I don't wanna take them out of the ground too soon because I don't want them to be too small. So like the longer we can leave them in there, the longer they will continue to grow. So basically we're gonna check on some stuff in the garden. Um, I probably have some chicken coop work to do, although while I'm congested, I don't know if that's the best time because I need to wear a mask for that. And uh, <clears throat> it's hard to breathe enough as it is. <laughs> so I think I might wait. Um, but we also have uh, bags, like three gallons of tomatoes that I need to process. So that may be happening today, may be happening tomorrow. It just depends on how much energy I have. Uh, but I just wanted to pop out here and check on things. It's looking great. I'm really happy. I am anxious to get the ranunculus in the mail so that we can get those started. They're going to go, uh, in addition to part of the eight and eight by four raised bed, there's going to be a bunch in here and I'll probably fill up this space too. Um, and we'll just save this space over here for all of the second succession spring stuff. But yeah, I'm, I'm anxious to get those ronculus going. Like I said, they take about 10 days to pre-sprout. Uh, pre-sprouting is not strictly necessary, but if I pre-sprout, then I know which ones are viable and which ones are not uh, because they will have root systems on them um, once they're sprouted. So I don't plant some corms that are not viable. Um, anyway, we'll get there when we get there. All right, so I will see you back at the house. I'm gonna go to a pharmacy and pick up some Sudafed and then we'll see what we've got going on in the home garden. Okay, so we're back home. Uh, the chickens are enjoying one of the last heads of lettuce from this bed that I'm gonna work in, uh, as well as some block, uh, flock blocks, which are su uh, sunflower seeds and mealworms. So they're very happy right now, making very happy birdie noises. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna be working on this bed. Uh, the carrots are looking amazing. These beets are looking great. I actually can see some beet formation, which makes me very happy. Oh, these greens look so good. I would actually love to eat just these, but I do want the actual beets. So I'm gonna be good and leave them. Uh, the radishes that we sowed a week or so ago are coming up. Now today, this is where the lettuces were. I'm gonna use this space to put um, some other vegetables in here and we'll see what happens. I am noticing some digging um, critters trying to get underneath. So it's time to um, set out more rat traps. Uh, I need to get a new batch because the last set that I got, um, you could set them, but they wouldn't trigger. Stepping on the, even putting my foot down on the trigger once they were set, wouldn't trigger them. So they were just eating the peanut butter off, enjoying that and not getting trapped. So uh, I don't know what was up with that box, but they're not expensive. So I'm gonna get some more start setting them out again because the only guys who dig in my garden so far have been the rats not gophers um, so what are we doing in this bed so we actually really love radicchio and i'm going to direct sow some of this stuff this bed seems to be the one bed that has been successful this year uh, mostly because it's been screened off but also it gets more sun than the rest of the garden. So I'm gonna put some of these in, put a row of that in, and I'm gonna pop a few of these in. Now, I've never direct sown these. I don't know if they're gonna do anything, but you know, seeds are cheap and I figure it can't hurt. So I'm gonna pop a couple of those in as well. Then I have other seeds here. Uh, these giant mustards, um, Florida broadleaf, Japanese giant. These are gonna go in other parts of the garden that are done now, as well as more buckwheat. 
And then I have some carrots and radishes to go up in the raised bed that still has tomatoes in it. Because we've been going down into the 40s at night, the tomatoes are wrapping up. Uh, they are pretty much done. So I'm gonna pull those out um, and then we can put a few uh, rows of carrots and radish in there and we'll see how they do. Um, I don't know that I have any more netting. I can always get some more, but um, that definitely protects them because when they're tiny like this, they're very yummy for birds and other critters. Okay, so I'm gonna put a few kohlrabi in the back and a row of radicchio up here and maybe one more row of radish. Um, and then we'll be done with this bed. bed is also doing very very well um, cauliflower and everything in there are protected now that I have the netting on and we're growing some heads so these are the tomatoes I was talking about they're gonna come out you can see they're showing signs of cold um, so they're they're ready to come out I do have some ripe ones on here and then a couple of green ones so that's fine they will ripen on the counter so what I'm gonna do today is uh, cut them off at the base after I harvest the tomatoes and pull the cages out. And then, instead of direct sowing today, I do wanna add some soil to this and give it a boost because you know tomatoes are heavy feeders and we've had other stuff in here. Um, I would like to give the carrots and the radishes their best chance. <laughs> so uh, tomorrow, I'll go get some soil and then we'll do the direct sowing in here. But at least I can get this bed clean and ready to go. Now I do have some beautiful basil here. It has flowered though, so its taste is not as good um, as when it's um, when it hasn't flowered. So it's a little bitter. So I'm actually going to give that to the chickens. Um, herbs are great for them and they'll eat it. Um, okay, and then I also have in here this gorgeous celery that I'm going to leave because I'm going to see how perennial it's going to be for me. Um, and we've really been enjoying it. So we'll see what happens there. There's the one okra plant <laughs> that came up and it produced one spear of okra, but that's cool. Hopefully next year we can have better luck. So I'm going to get started on this project. Shouldn't take too long. And then I think we're going to go ahead and harvest peppers. So these are also suffering from some cold. Uh, and I've been keeping these on here because I wanted them to turn for me. But I don't think they're going to. Um, especially not before we get a frost. So they're going to go on and come off. I'll clear out this bed of what doesn't need to be in here. So this will be another planting space when I get some soil. And the same for these guys. These are all sugar rush peach. And I've already harvested most of the jalapenos, but you can see there's, there's maybe a few fruits left, but the, the plants are definitely struggling because now it's getting cold at night. So we'll harvest what we've got and then clear this bed out. This is gonna be our garlic bed this year. And it's also gonna need some fresh compost to give it a boost as well as some fertilizer.
Okay, so this bed is cleared. This was the pepper bed. Uh, there's a couple of weeds in here, but that's okay because it, it's going to get uh, like raked a little bit and have compost added, and then we'll put the garlic in here. But yeah, now I'm getting excited for <laughs> for planting the garlic. And over here, I took out the couple of peppers that were here now. You will see still plenty of plants. So there are onions in here that have survived, that didn't get eaten by rodents. And you'll see potatoes popping up. So these are apparently potatoes that got missed. Um, and because I'm not going to use this bed for anything, basically it's just going to have onions in it. I'm just going to see what happens with those potatoes. I'm assuming they're going to rot because hopefully we'll get a lot of rain. But, you know, whatever. Uh, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to see what happens. <laughs> so they're staying like that. Now this bed, uh, I cleared the tomatoes from the back. I am leaving these marigolds in. They sometimes will overwinter for me. So we'll see if they do this winter. Um, but this is where I'll put some more radish and um, carrots once I get some compost to add on top. So with the exception of the sweet potatoes, this is the final harvest for the summer 2024 season. Not bad. Um, I got lots of tomatoes this year, uh, froze them all so that um, I could have enough to make sauces with um, all at once. And we got a lot of peppers this year, which is really awesome. However, um, I'm going to change up what I plant next year. We got a lot of sugar rush peach peppers, which are nice, but they're kind of hot and they're not, they're not exactly what we wanted. So I'm, I'm going to narrow down my pepper options for next year and hopefully I'll have another good pepper year. All right, guys, I'm feeling a little wiped out. So that's going to be it for me today. Thanks for hanging out with me while I did a couple of direct sow and other garden chores. I hope you're having a wonderful time in your garden and I will see you in the next one. Bye.